In this video, we're going to learn about the protist and the supergroup Rosaria. Rosarians are amoebas, so don't get that confused with the protists that are in the supergroup, also known as amoebozoa. Um, in this case, the amoebas have thread-like, needle-like, or root-like pseudopodia. So previously, the pseudopodia that we talked about were kind of more of this kind of lobe-like cytoplasmic extensions. With the rhizaria, you have the um, you have the cell, but the pseudopodia are kind of sharper, if you will. So they're more of these kind of needle-like projections. Rosaria have elaborate tests, which once again, remember test is just a specialized word referring to shells. And these shells can be made of calcium carbonate, silicon, or strontium salts. One interesting ecological role of rhizaria is that they help to lock away carbon. So there is carbon in these um, shells here, as well as in the, the living cell itself. And when these protists die and they sink to the bottom of the ocean, they actually lock away carbon or really locking away atmospheric carbon. And that carbon gets delivered to the bottom of the ocean. And they're are not a lot of living things at the bottom of the ocean, but there are some, and that's one way that they can get carbon is basically being delivered by these dead rhizaria. We're gonna talk about three subgroups of rhizaria, which include the foraminiferans, radiolarians, and circozoa. So starting with the foraminiferans, these are unicellular protists that are heterotrophic, which remember that means that they eat other organic compounds or other organic um, organisms. Some resemble snails, which you can kind of see in this picture here. So they have these kind of elaborate shells made of calcium carbonate. And the interesting thing is that these shells are porous. So the amoeba-like protist inside can actually extend its pseudopodia out through the pores in order to move around or capture prey. Um, some of them also house photosynthetic algae as a symbiont. One especially interesting component of foraminiferans is that they are denitrifiers. So they play a role in the nitrogen cycle with denitrification. And, and these foraminiferans are the only known eukaryotes to do so. So this uh, type of chemical reaction is mostly associated with prokaryotes, especially bacteria. But foraminiferans are eukaryotes that can also do these chemical reactions. You can often see the leftover shells of foraminiferans if you were to look at sand under a microscope. So when you look at sand under a microscope, some of it looks like these like shells that you see here that are just really small and microscopic. And these are actually the shells of the foraminiferans contributing to the makeup of sand. The radiolarians, you can see here that this is the, um, the test or the shell of one that is dead. And you can see here, you can see these needle-like pseudopods that are sticking out of the holes or the pores in the test. And once again, these pseudopods allow the protist to um, be mobile, so move around in its environment. It's also a way for the protist to reach out and grab food to bring into the main cell. The circozoa rosaria can be naked or shelled, so some of them have that test and others don't. And we're going to take a closer look at these two subtypes of circozoa. There's the chlorarachnophytes and the vampyrolids. The chlorarachnophytes are photosynthetic, and you can see that green pigment inside that allows them to do photosynthesis. 
And then the vampirulids, I just think this is a great name for a protist. They are vampiric amoebae, meaning that they have a pseudopod. In this case, you can see it here. And they can basically stick that pseudopod into other cells and suck out the contents. So you can see that this is the vampirulid. with its pseudopodia jetting into this um, kind of cell here that is having the contents of it sucked out. To summarize this group, we have the supergroup Rhizaria. That can be broken down into three major subgroups. We have the foraminiferans, the radiolarians, and the circozoa. The circozoa were further broken down into two subgroups known as the chlorarachnophytes and the vampirulids.